Round one is underway. Okay, so interesting deck lists. Okay, so uh, JP's deck, or JP as he's known, John Paul, um, he's playing uh, some of the sort of more powerful cards we've seen in standard so far. So mm. he's got a full four of Archangel Everson, um, Gideon, Smuggler's Copter, Spell Queller. Um, also running for Thriven Inspectors, so this all round utility card that seems to be doing a lot of good work in standard yeah. at the moment. Uh, three Reflector Mages, that um, sort of that menace that doesn't seem to disappear. Mm. Um, and also three Scrap Leaf Scroungers, three Stasis Snares, and a Tallcraft Exemplar. Yeah, that was that was the one that got me. So I initially put this, initially put this as Blue White Flash, but then it's got Tallcraft Exemplar. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's just Blue White Mid Range. Yeah, well, I guess there's, uh, there's eight ways in the main deck. Uh, sorry, even more than that, right? There's uh, there's eleven ways in the main deck to to switch that guy on into turn into a three, uh, three two. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty good rate. So it looks like uh, players have started. There's a uh, JP with his uh, custom energy counter there. Uh, maybe from another game that we will not talk about. <laughs> but, um, game we shall not speak of. Yeah, but he has like with the Aether Hub. So there's a card um, that's seeing a lot of play as well. Just oh, all around utility card. An outrageous four dollars <laughs> <laughs> for the standard uncommon. Okay. I can't bring myself to pay for it. Uh, okay, and Dougal led with um, the exemplar. Okay, uh, take inventory. Okay. Is that what we just saw played? Yes, we did. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And here okay. we go. And there, there you go. So there's the uh, the scrapyard scrounger. It's come up immediately. Yeah. So that's the quite the aggressive start for uh, JP. As long as playing out like the vehicles deck. Yeah. And and apologies, we do have uh, the player names uh, the wrong way around in the deck information. Uh, so on the right we actually have Dougal, and on the left we have uh, JP. Okay, but um, pretty aggressive start for Dougal. Sorry, for, for JP. Okay, um, and Dougal, on the other hand, has played, I believe, a Dino Tower. Mm, the namesake of the deck. Yeah. So, wh wh um, what's your experience with this card? How does this card play out? Uh, so, in at FNM last night against. Uh, white red vehicles that uh, card was a bit of a beating <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. and i guess this is the, so we've just seen uh Dougal, uh casting more spells here and another take inventory oh no that was a sorry that was a tormenting voice i believe um but he's just racking up the uh, energy there right so every time he casts a spell he gets to um put more and more things onto that down wall tower yeah and Guiding of Fevered Visions, okay. And, okay, so that decision by Dougal to target the Sussex Spirit, um, what do you make of that? I like it. I think it's a, I think it's a card that you just have to kill. It's a menace that, um, you know, it just, it, it's kind of like a thorn in your backside. And particularly um, the Blue Red Tower wants to play a bit of a controlling game. It is basically a control deck, and particularly the build that Dougal has as well. You have to be able to control the board, and the spirit just gets in the way of that game plan. So it basically has to sacrifice. Yeah, it has to be selfless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it just needs to be done, right? Like, yeah. uh, you, it, it's only 2-1. There's obviously there's a 3-1 on the board um, that you might be tempted to remove, but there's a few reasons Yeah, you would want to kill it. Yeah. Just, is that it does just have every other piece of removal in the deck. Um, and uh, the second is that that scrounger, it's got an extra line of text, doesn't it? Yep, so for a one and a black, you can exile another creature card in your graveyard to return it. That is also a recurring menace um, that just doesn't seem to go away. Of course, it's weak to all the exile spells in standard, particularly Decoration in Stone, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, Dougal does not have access to that card. So yeah. That is one of the weaknesses of the blue red builds. They do not have the exile cards against, you know, there are quite, a, uh, there's a few graveyard strategies in standard at the moment. Yep. Um, and Sc Scrap Hit Scrounger definitely uh, plays a role in those strategies. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the effect that does exist in um, blue is, of course, the, sorry, in red is um, Incendiary Flow. Uh, but it's got that problem of being sorcery speed, uh, mm. which makes the struggle a bit against 
Um, so we need the threats. There's a lot of flash threats, um, blue white flash deck. Um, you know, JP's got a couple of those flash creatures in yeah. his deck as well, and Citrus mm -hmm. just doesn't get there. And Dougal just packing it up, just yeah. getting beat down by um, the Scrounger and the uh, Problem Inspector. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. So that does it for game one. Yeah. So just looking over at the sideboards, let's right. see what Dougal can bring forth in this matchup. Or JP. Yeah, we will uh, bring those boards up in a moment. Okay, so uh, let's get Dougal. So, okay, what what happened to him in that game? He just got aggroed out, didn't he? Mm, it yeah. seems that way. So, what, what sort of options might he be looking at with his sideboard? Here? It, it is a bit tricky because John Paul um, has so many so many flyers, and just looking at Dougal's sideboard, he doesn't seem to have that many things that can stop them. Um, I guess he's got like things to gunk up the ground, so a thing in the ice. I guess he could put a Nibbles of Frost in to dunk up the air as well. But I think he really wants to get his control element down. And I think it just seems like JP's deck is just a little bit too fast for him to do so. Mm. Um, Would yeah. you consider sort of something like Thing in the Ice? It does block on the ground. Is yeah. that something that you'd bring in here? I think so. I think I'll bring a Thing in the Ice. I might think of Ceremonious Rejection if I thought Copters were, was a thing. He didn't see that, so of course, play, this is round one. Players haven't seen yeah. each other deck lists. Um, this Dougal doesn't know exactly what to expect here. Yeah, he could suspect because he's playing Thraben, and Thraben's best mate at the moment is Smugglers. Maybe he might, you know, think there is a Copter on the way. Mm -hmm. Given that it Copter is in ninety nine point nine percent of all decks at the moment. Yeah, it is. It's a pretty it is. Card. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nibbles of Frost. I don't know if he. I uh, would bring that in. I mean, maybe? It's a way to... It does lock down creatures. Um, it does. It's a bit of an engine. It does require you, you to be alive, though. So, mm. um, yeah. I think, think, think uh, one of the benefits of Thing the Ice, of course, is that um, it does just buy time. Yeah. Um, and the tempo advantage you can get by just, you know, having stopped a bunch of, uh, for example, Scrappy Scrounger attacks. Yeah. And then being able to bounce everything off the board. Uh, that seems like a mm. reasonable, reasonable line to take, perhaps. I wonder if you're bringing favored visions. I think that the the thing is, from what Dougal saw anyway, we've seen um, JP's deck, and it, yeah. it might be effective. But do, uh, John, JP's curve is very low. That's true. He probably and doesn't have like cards in his hand to really um, be punished by favored visions. Yeah. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, JP's sideboard. Okay, so JP had his first Paragon event today, but uh, he's definitely played a lot of Magic. Mm, he's um, one of the heavyweights in Canberra, that's for sure. Okay, and what might he think about here? I wonder if the, neg uh, the Negates might come in. Okay. Yeah, uh, just because um, Dougal does have a lot of spells, and a lot of, I guess, his control elements do come from the burn spells. So I think the Negates would be a good idea. Okay, so Negate, of course, being able to counter non-creature spells, which... Uh, from what he's seen, uh, it looks like Dougal's deck is full yeah. of. Um, he might suspect that Thing in the Ice might come yeah, in. It is it is a common sideboard plan for these tower decks. So if that is the case, then that Reflector Mage does look pretty juicy. Mm -hmm, but resetting all those counters, yeah. all that work that he's been putting in, that, that wouldn't be yeah. too bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even a flipped Thing in the Ice, that would be quite a powerful... Yeah, a follow-up. Yeah. yeah, but two for three mana. Mm -hmm. So I, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't sideboard too heavily. I do feel like he is... He is favoured somewhat, particularly with all the uh, instant speed interactions and instant speed uh, creatures. Yep. So I think the Negates and Inflector Mage would be my guess. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, I, I guess in, in general, uh, John Paul's uh, deck is trying to be pretty aggressive, especially in this matchup. It is definitely the aggressor. Mm. Um, so he wouldn't, he just want to stay on that plan, just uh, be able to move in. So it looks like the plays have started, so we'll, we'll jump over now. Um, Dougal led with a Fumarol. And JP, once again, with that uh, fantastic Thraben Inspector. Actually, it's a Miz, isn't it? It is too. Miz Thraben. It is a Miz. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I want to see the Toolcraft Exemplar come out. Yeah. <laughs> it, 
Oh, just attacking for one. Okay, not not most explosive yeah. and okay, spirit? selfless spirit. Yeah. For me, I don't. I feel. I always feel a little bit sad playing the spirit so early. <laughs> what? Why is that? I, I guess I feel like I, I want to play it when it's got more to protect. Whereas, like, if you play it early, I feel like it gives an opportunity for the opponent to kill it um, with not much. I guess I feel like the opportunity cost in killing it is is quite low. Like, it is the biggest threat on the board right now. You're gonna kill it anyway. Whereas if it's protecting another threat, it's kind of like. Aha, yeah. you killed my spirit, but I still have a, I don't know, torrential gear hole, for example. That is true, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's still um, it's still just going to beat down early, and this is kind of what JP wants to do here, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, so it might get there. But it looks like Dougal, he's got a lightning axe and a fiery templar. So how is he going to react? He's deciding to cast both of these. Uh, the I guess one of the issues with this line is that uh, it looks like he's probably going to point that fiery temper at um, JP's face. I think that might be what he did there. Mm. Let's double yeah. check. It looks like the Thrabans remain on the board, so... Yeah, well, I mean, if he targeted one of uh, JP's creatures, he would just sacrifice the, yeah. the Sulfur Spirit there. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and he did. So is uh, JP down to 17. Mm. Okay, and um, Dougal would have uh, so he's got the tower into that. Okay, um, so let's have a quick look at the tower. Let's see what this does. So this is one of the engines of um, engines of the deck. Oh, Gideon came down. Yeah. Uh, but let's quick have a quick look at this. Um, so it comes down with a bit of energy, and every time that um, so it doesn't come down with energy, but whenever Dougal does cast an instant or sorcery, he gets some energy. And then you can start cashing that energy in to start getting uh, free bolts. Mm -hmm. So it's a form of card advantage. Uh, it can interact with cards in your deck like uh, Harness Lightning or anything else that cares about energy. Yeah, even the humble Ether Hub. Yep, and there he goes. So he's uh, pointing that straight at Gideon. Okay, does not want to see an emblem here. No. So Gideon is definitely one of the troublesome cards for this deck to deal with. It's actually one of the troublesome cards for 99.9% .9 of the decks in standard to deal it with. It is definitely a troublesome card. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it's, so definitely um, with the spells, there's a limited number of spells that actually target opponents slash players that can, he can redirect to Gideon. Yeah, but I think Dougal's got that harness line, uh, the fire temper. Well, there he goes, and he's uh, remembering all these triggers here. Yeah. Um, gets a counter off the thing in the ice and points at it Gideon. Yeah. Okay, so not the worst. He's um, getting value off his spells. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is definitely what you want to see as well. You want, you want, you know, you want, you want to be firing all cylinders. You want to be firing off thing in the ice, Dynavolt Tower with the energy counters, getting as much value as you want from each per spell. Yeah. So in this case, like even though that that looks on its face as a one to one, um, he did get small amounts of extra advantage um, because he was oh fantastic. We can see see he's got three energy now. Um, yeah. So he was able to get that counter off the thing, which is now closer to flipping. Um, and get some extra energy. Um, yeah, so it's looking pretty good for... It's not the worst board state for, for Dougal. He's only facing down 4 power. Where he could have been looking at another attack from um, Gideon mm. there as well. Yeah. So it's not bad at all. And Gideon being a 5-5 does attack through the thing in the ice. Yeah, so there been a huge problem for Dougal. Yeah. And another Thraban Inspector. So, there I mean, is the Thraban army. Yeah. So the card's great. Um, it starts looking a bit anemic on these boards, but it's not... Not the worst. They also, you know, they cycle. This game is probably going to go long now with uh, with that thing on the board. Mm. Um, and he can catch this clues in later if he needs to. Yeah. Ooh. Is that a Nibbles? Yeah. So he did sideboard the Nibbles in. Okay. I'm holding up one up, and that was spell shrivel. Yeah. Wow. Okay. There you go. So JP recognizing that there's going to be some expensive, powerful spells that Dougal might use. And yeah. Cash yeah, in. I guess so. I guess he might think that Dougal might bring in the torrential gear hole. Right. Yes. So, yes, yeah. being able to counter it like an expensive yeah. spell is pretty good. Mm. And Stasis Snare, okay. Uh, that's another thing that the Blue Red deck struggles against enchantments. Yes, very hard to remove. Yeah. Alright. And there's a Copter now as well. Okay, things are looking pretty grim for Dougal here. What might he find here that, that sorts this out? I think that was a. It's a couple of lightning spells. Okay, so um, each of those spells will uh, 
gain him some extra energy. Mm. So he might be able to... He's going for it immediately. Okay. Mm. I guess he might be thinking, like, he could get the energy um, to bolt the copter, the copter. Yep. when he gets crewed. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable plan. Yeah, so here he does have quite a bit of energy to play with seven. And deciding to do this on the main phase because uh, presumably because he's seen some counter magic from JP. Yeah. And so um, that would be a pretty critical turn. Of course, Dying Vault Tower is not a spell, so that damage can't be counted. So, so it doesn't look like he crewed the copter there. Okay. But Dougal, uh, deciding not to play around anything, just decides to, to yeah. kill that other inspector. <laughs> There's yeah, another, another one inspector. Comes out. <laughs> and look, even though these don't look super impressive on the board, remember these all came with a clue. So uh, yeah. JP is going to be able to just get way ahead on card advantage here. <laughs> and look, they have done quite a bit of damage. They really have, yeah. So I've been inspectors. <laughs> uh, that looks like an anticipate from Dougal. Yeah. Okay, he's going to need to find quite a bit here though to, to manage, manage this board. The Dynavolt Tower is probably going to have to work over time here. Yeah. It does look like that was a spell though. Um, I'm trying to see what it was. Harness Lightning. Okay. Yep. All right. That's what and, he needs. and do you know what that just did? Gave him energy. Extra energy. Uh, in <laughs> fact, he gets to keep one energy on yeah. the. Um, from the target inspector, you can choose to spend only two of that energy he gets from it. Yeah. So he should be up. Oh, uh, they've got negated. Oh. Unfortunately. Okay, well, again, it's a cast trigger for the Dynavolt Tower, so he's still got that bot waiting to go. Yeah. So he's still reached his threshold of five energy for the uh, six. tower. Six. Six. Oh, was six? Uh, let's double check that. Five. Yeah, sorry, it is five damage. Yes. So he has reached. The threshold. Yep, and he's used it again. Uh, again, JP protecting his uh, his copter there. Yeah. And this is the power of the Thrawn Inspector. It does um, even in the late game replace itself. That is the spirit. That is a problem yeah. to, to Dougal. Okay. So he'll. Uh, and he's got that fumarole sitting there, uh, so he has a block. Yeah. But I've got a feeling that anything's coming through might just be the copters here. It is um, yep. quite a lot of power in the air. And this copter will just end the game. Yeah, because I think Dougal has a land. Yeah, but I don't think Dougal has hand. an answer to what's about to happen. It's only got one energy. Yeah, and, and that's the, the game, alright. So, yeah. Um, sort of cheap, efficient threats from um, JP. Mm -hmm. uh, that obviously Dougal is doing much more powerful things with his deck. Um, it just it needed the time for the setup. Yeah, and it really came down to that one turn when JP really just kind of dismantled Dougal's threats first with Stasis Snare, mm -hmm. um, and then requiring Dougal to use up all his energy to kill off his you know one two Thraven inspectors. Yep. So and, and countering that Nibblus was was pretty huge yeah, as well because that card definitely. was going to just uh, otherwise yep. take over the game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, good reads there by JP. There's yep. a reason why he is considered one of Canberra's best players. Uh, he just missed out top eight in uh, GP Sydney this year. Uh, wow. So, yeah, he missed out on winning in. So, yeah, it's always an intimidating play against these players, um, but they definitely deserve the reputation that they have as yeah, Canberra's heavyweights. Yeah. Well, um, good effort by Dougal, though. Um, he's still got time. There's, uh, this is just round one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's always fun watching him play. He's a great guy to play against as well. So I'm, I'm sure both players had a good time there. Yeah. Okay, uh, fantastic. So that will do it for round one. Uh, a pretty quick one. Uh, but we will be back for round two. Uh, so this is Kanishka and... Virginia. Yeah, and we're signing off until round two. See you guys later. Okay.